Hey everybody. All right, happy 10th of January, day 10. We're nailing this, we're doing it. So I wanted to do this video from my truck earlier in the evening, uh, a little different perspective and point of view. Plus I have a little break before I need to go to the next job site. My crews are working an evening shift, a swing shift tonight. They're working like three to 11. So uh, I wanna cheerlead for them, visit a couple of sites before I head home. And um, I just kind of going through my one meal a day. That's what I'm doing tonight on my way home. I'll just grab a couple of steaks or maybe I'll stop into a local cafe and pick up four to six eggs that are scrambled. Got to make sure they're whole eggs that are scrambled, not egg beaters. Uh, and then some, some hamburger. I'll, I'll figure out something on the way home and bacon, of course. But most importantly, I want to answer a question from someone that had asked me, hey, Joel, what do you do if you really have to, you know, snack on something? What's the the least amount of damage you can do with a snack? <laughs> well, I don't know if that's a, if there is anything, the least amount of damage, I say, you know what? If you fall off the wagon, get back on, number one. Try not to do it with sugar or heavy carbs, right? Um, so here's what I do. My kind of one of my go-tos for snacks was always salt and vinegar potato chips. I don't know what it is. I just love salt and vinegar, vinegar potato chips. So what I have learned to shift to is fermented foods like sauerkraut or kimchi. So I know not everyone likes that. I totally get it, but that's what I do for that. If you have a sweet tooth and you just want something I don't know. I guess honey would do it, but it's still a lot of sugar, right? The principle of this is avoiding sugar. So um, the only other thing that I would do if you're trying to, if you're craving sugars, potatoes, um, something like that, is put salt on your tongue and put it up against the roof of your mouth and just let the salt dissolve or put a pat of butter, like a little square, one by one by quarter inch, on your tongue and let it dissolve. And it's that rich, satiating, savory fat. And that has curbed my appetite if I crave, if I crave something sweet. So salt at first and then butter if you need a little extra. And again, for me, if, if I'm just craving a salt and vinegar, vinegar potato chip or something like that, I have fallen back to, I'm gonna have a half a cup of sauerkraut or kimchi. And there's a lot of kimchis out there too that have sugar in there and all that. Nope, you don't want that. There's great stuff in the Pacific Northwest. Um, <laughs> a buddy of mine, Nils Magic Kimchi, that's good stuff. Or there's Oli Kraut, if you want uh, sauerkraut. It's all local here in Olympia, south of Tacoma. But I'm sure you know, across the U.S., many places will have their own sauerkraut or kimchi of some sort. Just make sure it doesn't have sugar in it. And I've heard time and time again from many doctors that um, fermented foods, kefir, kimchi, or sauerkraut is actually good. Even if you're on a keto or a carnivore, you know, lifestyle, I, I can't say it's right. I can't say it's wrong. You're going to have to ask, you know, Dr. Ken Berry, Sean Baker, Anthony Chafee, uh, Dr. Kiltz, you know, all these folks. I, I'm, I don't know. I really don't. But I know if I, I would rather have some sauerkraut, and again, half a cup, or kimchi, than eat potato chips. At the end of the day, I think it's a far less damage. And then the same thing for sugar, rather than a bunch of chocolate-covered peanuts or or chocolates or truffles, you know what? I'm just going to have some salt on my tongue, maybe a tablespoon of it. That's a bit much. Okay. But I'll have a really generous helping of salt or butter. Other than that, I, I don't know what to tell you. You know, those are just things that I've done and I've limped through and, and I've made it. So uh, anyway, I hope you're enjoying the journey. Don't get frustrated with it. If you fall off the wagon, hop right back on and you're gonna be fine. I do know this from experience, that nights that I have fallen off in, you know, in years past too, when I was, when I lost my first 61 pounds, um, 
it could take anywhere from three to five days for my body to regulate itself and start to lose weight again. So if I was losing weight and it's like, hey, I just hit 20 pounds and I celebrated and I had some something with sugar or carbs or potato chips or whatever, I noticed that I kind of stalled and my weight loss kind of stalled. And then I didn't really start to see any movement again for three to five days of being strict carnivore or keto again. So the other thing I'm going to start doing, I loaded up on a lot of butter at the beginning of the year, but I have to scale that back. So I'm going to have light butter and between sirloins, New York strips and ribeyes. I might even have some chuck roast or something like that. So that's really all I have to say about that. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, like I said in one of my earlier videos, don't cheat. Don't cheat on your taxes. Don't cheat in your relationship. Don't cheat on a test. Don't cheat on your, your lifestyle, your diet. <laughs> right? It's, it's very true right across the board. But um, all right. God bless you guys. Take care. Have a great night. I'm going to head back uh, to work and then uh, grab some meaty goodness on the way home. So I'll uh, post this later on and uh, catch you on day 11. All right. Have a good one. Bye.